After one year of wearing both the Apple Watch and the Garmin as I train for the London and New York City marathons this year, I want to make sure that you don't make the same expensive mistake that I did. I train almost three to four hours per day with the goal of running a sub three hour marathon one day because I wanna see what my body is capable of. Garmin and Apple are two of the biggest watch players in the game. There's a ton of marketing on all these fancy features, but the most important things in my opinion is it easy to start your workout, can you view the data that you need while you're working out? And then can you easily review all the data after you're done with your workout? And we're not talking about specific watches. I'm gonna be talking about the general experience about the Garmin watches in general versus Apple watches overall, because for the most part, they're pretty close. Thank you Shopify for sponsoring this video. First, can I easily start a workout without frustration? How does it work on Garmin? I'll pull up my watch, I hit the start stop button. I don't even have to be looking at the screen until this view. I see the type of workout I wanna do, I select it, and I now I just wait for GPS. Once I'm ready, I can keep my eyes closed, and all I do is tap this start stop again, and the workout has started. Boom, when I'm done, I press it again, and it stops the workout. I never really have to look at the screen. There's audio, there's haptic feedback, to notify that the workout has started and stopped, so it makes it super easy and effortless. I don't have to use the touchscreen at all unless I absolutely want to. I can actually scroll with these side buttons here. Now, for the Apple Watch, if you have the Ultra, you can press the action button, or you go ahead and just open up the workout app by scrolling and using the touchscreen. I find the type of workout I'm doing, I have to select it with the touchscreen. There's no way to use physical buttons to do so. Once that's started, I can now wait for GPS on the Ultras, whereas the Series and SE watches, I don't have this feature. Once I'm ready on the ultras, I can press the action button to start the workout. And on the series watches, it's going to do a three, two, one countdown. Once that workout is started, if I want to pause, I just press two buttons. It doesn't matter which two, as long as one of them is the action button or on a series nine or SC watch, you press these two side buttons and that can start and stop your workout. You might also have screenshots tied to it too. So from a starting a workout standpoint, I love that all of the Garmin's are going to wait until you've achieved a good GPS signal. Whereas the Apple Watches, only the Ultras, if you've activated Precision Start here, are you going to be able to wait and start your workout with the action button or else it's gonna have a three, two, one countdown as soon as you tap the workout type. So from a hardware standpoint, I really prefer having buttons that I can press and not have to look at the screen, get physical and audio feedback. So I know that I started to stop my workout. Whereas the Ultra, the action button to start, the two press buttons to stop, the action buttons to create a segment or a lap. It gets a bit confusing in terms of which buttons I have to press because the start stop is not the same on most workout types. I've only found on swimming, and certain custom workouts where the action button itself will act as a stop button. So that gets confusing as a user because I'm not really sure which button I need to press. So there is a slight frustration on the Apple Watch side. There is one issue that I've had with both watches when it comes to starting my workouts effortlessly. Now on the Garmin, there has been a couple times where it's like restarted right at the beginning of me trying to start a workout. Not sure what that was about. I haven't had that issue in a while. The Apple Watch has this like orange screen of death where I can press it and it just shows an orange screen and it doesn't start the workout but it vibrates like it does. That's been a bit frustrating because I've lost faith in that the action button actually starts my workout so I always now check visually or I will go ahead and swipe to manually start it from the touch screen. These are both like very random occurrences but they can happen from time to time. These are computers and they are not perfect. Battery life, now. This is the world's number one argument. Everyone who's team Garmin is gonna be like, we have battery life. Apple Watch will not survive a single workout. You are right and you are wrong at the same time. The newest Apple Watch series nine and eight, if you bought it in the past year or two, more than likely it's going to last a half marathon at least, maybe a full marathon depending on which power modes you're using. The series nine I think will last a full marathon, four or five hours. The Apple Watch Ultra will definitely last a full marathon. And if you're doing ultra marathons, you do need to activate low power mode. But for every single workout that I've done, I've not even been at 100% before the workout. Like sometimes I'll start the workout at 50%, run for two to three hours, and the Apple Watch will still survive. So trust me, the whole battery conversation, these, both these devices are great and will do what you need. It's the charging situation where it becomes an issue. The Garmin, it has the worst charging experience I've ever seen. It's kind of like the mouse on the Apple devices where you have to plug it into the bottom. But what's nice is that right now I'm at 21 days battery with the specific features that I have activated here. Um, if I want to run, it's actually gonna tell me. I'm gonna have 44 hours of battery just for GPS. So I can run with this watch for 44 hours before it runs out. So you wanna mix that 21 days plus the 44 hours and you're probably getting, you know, maybe two weeks of battery life in current settings 
I'm going for maximum accuracy on this thing. But this can last up to 30 days if you're not doing any GPS tracking. Whereas the Ultra lasts me about a day and a half. I typically take it off in the morning and at night while I'm showering or using the bathroom, let it charge for 30 to 45 minutes. And that gets me enough juice to get to the next charging point. One thing that's interesting though, is the charging experience in the Apple Watch is so much nicer. I take the watch off and with a magnet, I just plop it on and now it's charging. The Garmin, I have to take the watch off. I gotta find the port, find the cable, make sure the port fits in the cable, and then it's charging. Obviously with the magnets, if for some reason you slam it on there and the magnets aren't on properly, your watch might not be charging. Whereas with the cable, as long as you really shoved it in there, it will be charging. If you don't have an Apple Watch and you don't have the daily habit of charging your watch, that's a new thing you will have to adopt. Whereas the Garmin, I can travel a weekend, sometimes even a week somewhere and I won't bring the charger. The other side of that is I feel so confident that this battery kind of lasts forever is that I don't check the battery before I leave for a trip and I've had it die in the middle of a trip and I didn't bring the charger. So it's gonna be unique to your personality and your charging habits and style. As you probably know, when I make videos about watches or any other products on my channel, I tend to say click the link in the description because they help power the channel. Those are all usually affiliate links where at no cost to you, I'm able to make some commission so I can keep making videos like this. And some of these links are powered by Shopify, who's the sponsor of this video. Shopify is a commerce platform used by millions of people in over 170 countries, selling online, in person, and across borders. As a creator, I actually use Shopify Collabs for some of my products because I'm able to apply to and work with some of my favorite brands. For example, you probably saw the video where we measured our body fat using an Apple Watch strap called Aura. And in the description, I put a Shopify Collabs link to measure any clicks, conversion, and commissions that I made from the sales of that product. But that's not it. There are other brands that I want to work with. Like you probably know, I love saunas. So I can actually go to the Shopify Collabs Discover section, search the top sauna brands, and I know Sisu Sana looks amazing. I wanna work with them. So I can send in my application and start partnering with them directly through Shopify. And as a business owner, you'll be able to find amazing creators who can help start getting the message out there about your product. As a creator, I'm able to effortlessly track my current revenue streams and increase the ways that I make money. Shopify Collabs makes it that easy. This is just one of the many tools that Shopify offers in terms of supporting to start, grow, and manage your entire business. To learn more about Shopify and Shopify Collabs, go to shopify.com slash Shervin Collabs. Creators with at least a thousand followers on a single platform are eligible to join. Thank you Shopify for sponsoring this video. So a lot of the workouts that I do and that most people will do will be based on distance, the pacing, and sometimes heart rate. And for these three main variables, I like to have different pieces of hardware that help make the watches a bit more accurate. And you have to put these on before you work out and you need to make sure that they're connected to your watch. So if you are a data freak like me, you wanna make sure that it actually connects easily to your device. Like the Garmin heart rate strap will work with my Apple Watch. The Polar heart rate strap will work with the Garmin and the Apple Watch. Um, the Stride foot pod to get better distance and pacing accuracy when I'm doing a treadmill. Uh, my core body temperature sensor just to see heat strain. All these devices I like to connect before I go on my run. On the Garmin, you can see that there's a flashing heart, a flashing shoe, and a flashing M2. Those are my three external devices. So as soon as I start the workout, I can see is that device connected or not. I'm missing two of those devices. It's very easy to know that things are connected. And if they're not, I can go ahead and tap into my settings and go ahead and make sure that my sensors and accessories, like why they're not connecting, I can go try to find them or search for them. Whereas on the Apple Watch, as soon as I start the workout, I have no idea. So every time I run and I wanna make sure that my heart rate monitor's uh, connected, I have to go to the home screen, I have to use the touch button, I have to then go to settings, and then go to Bluetooth, scroll all the way to the bottom because that's where health devices are, find my heart rate monitors, and if it says not connected, I have to tap that so, so it shows connected. Because I have no idea if it's actually connected right before my run, and it doesn't show it on the workout screen. So that's one of the downsides of the Apple Watch when you're trying to use external devices. The second piece is foot pods. The Apple Watch does natively support the Stride foot pod inside of their workout app. So I have to load up the Stride workout app on my Apple Watch instead of the native workout app. So I don't use the action button. I just scroll down, find Stride, and then I can select run. I could do an open run and it could be indoors. And now I just need to make sure. So I'd go to treadmill run if I'm doing an indoor run, open workout. 
and then I just need to connect my stride to the watch to get it going. And I'm just gonna get different data screens, different information is gonna get documented and recorded. For indoor workouts, it uses the stride as the distance and pacing. For outdoor workouts, it uses GPS. So I found from a usability standpoint of using external pieces of hardware, the Garmin just shows them easier before I start the workout, and it just integrates with more hardware pieces. Even for cycling and bike computers, they both connect, but it's just easier to know that the Garmin is connected before I start the workout. Whereas in the Apple Watch, I gotta go to settings, Bluetooth, blah, 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 and double check that it's actually connected. Doing an open run isn't the only way that I work out. Another one is custom workouts. I personally have a coach and he writes my workouts inside this app called Training Peaks. It will have everything that I need to do um, as well as a description on what I need to do. And this information automatically gets sent to both my Garmin and my Apple Watch. So I'm happy that they both support this integration. So here you can see it's sent to Apple Watch or an auto sent to my Garmin. And the workout distance, the pacing, and the time durations are sent and my watches will both buzz as I'm going through the workout. And this makes it effortless because I know I need to do this workout today. How does it look and feel on my watch? The Apple Watch is I go ahead and press the action button to open up the workouts. Under training peaks, if I have a workout that day, it's going to show up with whatever that workout is. I can see the distance, the pacing, and all that information. And if I want to start that workout, I just tap start. I select if it's an indoor or outdoor run. Typically I'm running outdoors. And then it's actually going to guide me through the workout as I do it. On the Apple Watch, it's very focused on the actual distance. So the information that I get to see here is purely the distance. The one downside of the Apple Watch is that I only really get to see the distance left for that segment of the workout. Whereas the Garmin, I think does it a little bit better. So in the Garmin, I would do the same thing. I'd go ahead to my run. If I have a workout that day, it's gonna say, hey, you have a workout today. Would you like to do it? But since I don't, I'm actually going to go training calendar, you can find a workout that has some information in it, like five miles of strides. I would say do workout, and now the workout is loaded onto my watch. When I start the workout on Garmin, the one advantage that I think it has is I have a specific pace I need to follow for this, and it's actually gonna show my pacing right here. It's saying, hey, you need to be within that 7.57 to 10 minute pace, and it's kind of like a dial. It's very visually easy to see that information while I'm running. It'll also send me notifications if I'm within that pace or what that pace for that segment needs to be. The buttons aren't perfect. <laughs> I guess the Garmin is a bit slow to react, which can be a bit frustrating if you're moving very fast, whereas the Apple Watch tends to be a bit faster. So on the Apple Watch, if I start the workout, it's gonna show me the paces that I need to see only at the beginning. So that's a bit frustrating because now that I'm running, I don't really know what the pace I need to be at for this segment is. Um, and if I tap the next interval, I can see, all right, three miles at 6.05 to 6.40 pace, but I honestly don't know if I'm within that pace. I have to kind of memorize that piece of information for all three miles. Whereas on the Garmin, I can kind of see a red and yellow zone. Um, and I will get notifications if I fall outside of that on both watches. But on the Apple Watch, there's no glanceability during the workout to know if I'm within that pace or not. When it comes into diving into more detail while working out or running and looking at this information, I can see my heart rate zones on both watches. They have kind of color coding for those heart rate zones. I can see my live pacing. In terms of how quickly and well they're able to update to my newest pace, with any kind of watch, there is going to be a bit of a delay. So keep that in mind. And it looks for the most part, right, there's pretty spot on. Uh, there's going to be more smoothing. As you can see, the blue is the Apple Watch and the purple is the Garmin. So the, the Apple Watch just has more smoothing. Like these corners are rounded more, the lines are straighter, whereas the, the Garmin is going to have like a little bit more jaggediness to it and that can impact your distance. Yeah, so <laughs> this seems like there's nothing else on the pier, but there definitely is. Uh, I walked up and around this boardwalk. It looks like both watches put me in the water for a second. But then I got back on the boardwalk, so still pretty close. So both of those conditions, once again, yep, right here, the Apple Watch decided to cut corners and put me through the water. So if you add that up over multiple miles and multiple piers, oh, cut corner around this pier too. See, this is where the 20 mile run where I lost almost half a mile of distance on the Apple Watch and I didn't actually finish a full 20 miles. But for the most part, I've noticed that they're very on par to each other while I'm running. It's only on the treadmill that they can be drastically different. And overall distances, for the most part, they're good in a good GPS area and if my software is up to date. And time, watches are best at tracking time. You are going to have very consistent seconds, hours, minutes on both watches. And the plus addition is the Garmin does do rep counting. So if you're doing any kind of weightlifting, you can count your reps in the gym. It does require a bit more of a setup process. So I just never use that feature. There are some apps on the App Store and the Apple Watch will do automatic rep counting as well. Same thing, setup process, friction points, I don't use either. Now that we've finished the workout, what is the user experience like? 
Both watches will display your distance, your average pace of the entire run, elevation, the temperature of that day, sometimes power and some other advanced metrics as well. The Apple Watch, I can go ahead and just scroll once I finish my workout to see that information. And then the Garmin is going to kind of scroll on its own automatically through that stuff as well as show a visual map of where I've ran. So it's cool to sometimes take Instagram photos of that visual map on the Garmin and, and post that. Whereas the Apple Watch, it's just showing text. Now, if you're doing any kind of heart rate based training, I prefer using a chest heart rate strap. The Garmin and Polar are pretty good. They're actually very good, some of the best. They're going to use electrical signals from your heart to tell you your heart rate. They will update the fastest in terms of giving your, your current heart rate at that time. Whereas watches will be using light and algorithms to guess your heart rate. And they're pretty good at getting close. If you've watched videos from the Quantified Scientist, DesFit, DC Rainmaker, especially Rob the Quantified Scientist, he shows that the Apple Watches when it comes to heart rate accuracy are some of the best. Just know that they're gonna lag behind and be a little bit slower, especially when doing any kind of workout where your heart rate is fluctuating a lot. But steady state, Workouts with little movement, you'll get some of the best information, like cycling. But when I am running and I'm trying to do very specific heart rate zone workouts, I will wear these. You just need to make sure to get them wet on both sides and then connect via Bluetooth or Ant. But I've found for the most part, the heart rates are pretty close to one another. It does depend on your skin color, the tightness, skin perfusion based on the weather that day. If you have tattoos, they will most likely not work. So this is your next best alternative. Wear this and you'll just override the heart rate data and get very accurate information. What's the experience like when I'm actually working out and can I view the data that I need while I'm running, swimming, cycling? I would say, I would argue that running is probably the hardest workout to actually you look at things like your watch or your phone because you're just moving up and down whereas biking you're more stable and swimming you kind of have to stop on the wall to look at your watch and weightlifting it's much much easier than everything else so running it's the hardest I want to be able to quickly absorb information while I'm running and I've noticed when I have custom workouts on the Garmin and I have that barometer of like the reds on the sides and the green in the middle it's much easier to know, am I hitting my pace? Am I within my heart rate zone? From that just visual color perspective, where I don't have to kind of like really read the information, I can glance and know what's going on. The Apple Watch doesn't have that good of a feature. It has like a pacing feature, but it's specific to the pace of your entire workout, not to that segment of your custom workout. And the heart rate zones on the Apple Watch are pretty nice because I can know the color shade that I'm in, but sometimes those square blocks are a little too small. So when you're running, you might not be able to tell which heart rate zone you're in. So from a glanceability, the Garmin wins. But when I wanna get more detailed information, they both offer the ability to customize your data screens, customize the number of data screens. On the Garmin, I can press buttons without looking at the screen and go through my different data screens. On the Apple Watch, I would use the digital crown to scroll. It can be a little frustrating to scroll a digital crown when you're running, whereas pressing buttons can be a bit easier, especially when you don't have to look at the screen. On the Apple Watch, the screen just needs to be active so that we can scroll through. And scrolling takes a couple more milliseconds than pressing a button does. So it makes it a bit harder. But for the most part, I'm not changing screens because I'm tired, I'm exhausted, I'm sweaty, and I'm focusing on doing the workout at peak effort rather than trying to look at information. And when I'm trying to do that glanceability, how well and bright are the screens? Both are bright and colorful. I think the Epix is much better than the Phoenix, but the Apple Watch is definitely very bright with the new 3000 nits. Arguably, there's not a drastic difference between the two in terms of can I see the screens when I'm running outside. As long as you get some of the newer models, even the new Garmin 965, like all those screens are now very bright, very colorful. The older Garmins might struggle with display brightness, but the newest Garmins and almost all the Apple Watches will have great displays. The touchscreens. The touchscreen on the Apple Watch is much more responsive. It feels like an iPhone, whereas in the Garmin, there is just the slight lag. It feels kind of like an Android. But when you start a workout on the Garmin, it will automatically lock the screen. This is native to how it arrives when you first purchase it. On the Apple Watch, it does not lock the screen automatically, nor is there a feature for you to activate to do that. Me, as a sweaty male man, who sometimes wears long sleeves in the winter, that long sleeve, as well as my sweat, can stop the workout, pause the workout, end the workout, change my data screens. So I've learned anytime that I'm working out, a big thing to do is turn on the water lock. I press the control center, I turn on water lock, and now the screen, I can't touch it, I can't do anything with it, but all my buttons on the Apple Watch work. So I can still scroll, right? I can't use the touch screen, but I can use the digital crown, and I can use the action button. So I can start, stop, pause, workouts, and I'm not actually using the screen. So that's just one thing where I have to kind of remember to turn on the water lock. I did a half marathon race once where I forgot to turn on the water lock. I was sweating, I had long sleeves on, and it stopped my workout. And I was looking at my watch to see my pace, and there was no workout running, and I was like, no. 
my Strava is not gonna show a full 13 miles. I'm gonna have a six mile and then like a four mile. I was a bit disappointed. Ever since then, I always wear two watches now to have some redundancy. And then because I have worked out, right, I have to think about the straps and the sweats. Always take your watches off, dry them. Like, look at all that. Like, look at that sweat. That's just from sitting here in this hot room right now. You wanna make sure that not only you check out your watch tans, but also that you're, you're allowing your skin to breathe. It can be pretty bad if you're always wearing your watch and you're not allowing it to be, breathe and moisture is building up. You can get different things on your skin. So take these watches off. Wear bands that are breathable. Like this ocean band has some bumps, so there's just more air that can go through and, and water can evaporate. The Garmin one also has some holes. I love the Nike bands because those have a lot of holes and they can breathe. The flexible straps can actually retain water. Sometimes they can dry quicker, but they just retain water on your skin. So you really want to let those ones dry after you've worked out. Just make sure you get the good straps for both. And for the most part, they do have an easy on off system like here. I can kind of take the strap off and swap it out for a different band. Apple Watch, same thing. You just press a button and slide it off. So they do have an easy system to switch them on and off. Uh, definitely on the newer Garmin's and all Apple Watches. Some of the older Garmin's might have a different system. Now that we've finished the workout, what's the user experience around sleep, tracking, and overall training insights? I wear a lot of wearables. I'm always tracking my recovery, readiness, whatever you wanna call it. Garmin has a ton of that stuff now. They've got like body battery. They give you this like training readiness thing where it says, oh, you're unproductive, you're productive, you're overtraining, you're detraining. The Apple Watch doesn't have anything natively other than showing my sleep stages and overall sleep time. I think most of this information can be an interesting data point, but it should not decide how you feel. And I try to dial into how I actually feel and not let wearables decide how I feel that day. But one thing I do love about the Garmin is it has a morning report. So every time I wake up in the morning, it's gonna say, hey, good morning. You have a morning report. This is how you slept last night. This is your training readiness today. This is your HRV and this is the weather. It's kind of cool, it's neat, but I would never let these things define how you feel and how you actually train. It's just a data point. Um, sometimes when I am overtraining, it might be good to know, all right, you're, you're running too fast, too hard. But the one value I love is the VO2 max metric. I do look at that a lot because I'm trying to increase my VO2 max and we all know that's a very important health metric. And on the Apple Watch, it's also saying 52. So it's definitely increasing. I'm trending up and both devices definitely say that. Oh, am I above average? I'm not exceptional yet, am I? Both these watches are gonna give you all this other information. It's like, it's not necessary. You need the basics. You need to be able to track your workout. You need to be able to do your workout and you need to review it and see how you did. That's really all that's important. All this other stuff is like fancy. It's like the cherry on top of the cherry on top of the other cherry. But I do like looking at the race predictor here. Like I'm almost at a sub 25K supposedly. These are all nice to have. It thinks I can do a 329 marathon. Let's see if that's true. When I do it in London in just 10 days. Subscribe to see that video. Turn on your notifications down below. Strava integration. I think this one's huge. Um, I think it's important to publish your workouts online. I don't know. I think it's cool to be able to see what other people are doing as well as like show what you're doing. It's inspiring, it can be a bit competitive, but it's fun. Both of these watches will take their native data from the Garmin app and from the Apple workout app and you'll be able to publish it to Strava. Do they work exactly as they say? Sort of and sort of not really. There are two things I've noticed that I don't like about both of them. One, the Garmin sends its data from your watch to your phone to the Garmin servers and then the Garmin servers will send that to Strava. I found that to be very good because if the app is not working the best, as long as the Garmin servers got it, boom, it's on Strava. But there are cases where the Garmin servers do go down, so sometimes you have to wait a day, maybe two days, before that workout gets published to Strava. Or you can manually do it. Yo, Strava, you wanna verify me? I'd love that so much. But you can follow me at Shervin Shares on Strava, and the way to publish your Apple workouts is actually through Apple Health. So it's gonna send it from your watch to your iPhone and store it in Apple Health, and then you can automatically or manually upload that to the Strava Cloud from the Strava app on your iPhone. So right now I have both Apple Health and Garmin connected. As you can see, my Garmin will automatically send that data to Strava. I do have it as public, so you can see most of my runs. If I do wanna rename it, change the shoes that I wore on that workout, I do have to open the app and like update those. For Apple Health, when I had it manually set, I would manually go ahead and import only my runs. So those are the ones with the shoes leaning upwards. You can have automatic uploads on, but I kind of prefer doing manual stuff so I don't have to send everything. 
and on my Garmin, I only track runs anyways. The only issue that I've had is sometimes Apple Health can be a little funky when, it, when it's working with other apps. I've had this on Strava as well as Training Peaks, but the solution that I found is as long as you delete the app and reinstall the app and re-give permissions to Apple Health, then it can work. And the automatic uploads isn't perfect, so that's why I just pick the manual uploads because that seems to just work every single time. So that's where I kind of prefer the Garmin. I know as long as I open the Garmin app, I sync it to my Garmin app, it's gonna send directly to Strava. I don't have to think about the specific settings on my iPhone. Final thoughts. I'm 10 days away from the London Marathon. Which watch am I going to be wearing on my wrist? Both, because I wanna make sure I have a level of redundancy. But if you do follow me on Strava, you notice that I've actually switched to using my Garmin as my main device. And there are just a few reasons for that. I've had too many occurrences where I've accidentally ended the workout. I've had the issues where even though the GPS is locked, the pacing and distance data was a little bit off on my Ultra 2. And add on top of that, the hardware integrations piece where I can see my heart rate strap, my foot pod are connected as soon as I'm starting the run. Whereas on the Apple Watch, I have to go into settings and it just creates this extra effort to starting my workouts. And because of that experience over the last year, I've decided to make the Garmin my main running device now. I think these things only matter when you're really getting into training and there's specific numbers you need to hit, where if you're really busy and you don't have the time to deal with technology issues, I will always be wearing both. I will continually test them. Use the device that you have. The Apple Watch is still amazing. They're both great devices. I would recommend either one if you're someone who's starting to train, but there are specific needs that I have that the Garmin just does better. So I've made that my main running device. Since you enjoyed this video, make sure to turn on notifications, subscribe down below, follow me on all the socials at Shervin Shares, and go watch my video where I compared all of the best smartwatches linked right here.